Okay, let's do it. Yes, indeed. You know, what do, you, what do they say? The ghost is in the machine all the time when gear is just going to act up, act up time and time again. Uh -huh. uh, welcome to Sunday Live Chat. And once again, uh, welcoming uh, some just amazing guys here, Paul Barker and Josh Hawley, uh, Led Into Gold. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you just oh, fine. Good. Yeah, you sound great. Excellent. I'm glad. It's hard to communicate when, when, when we can't hear each other. So uh, it's glad glad to have you, Josh. I love that look on your eyes. Is are you going to have that look? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's perpetual. Sadly, it's amazingly in the in in the poster. Simon. <laughs> and yes, are you guys excited? We sure are. Ask us if we're terrified. Are, are, what, what, where are you at? Where's your mindset at? What are you thinking? We're ready to go. We've got a week. Man, we got this. Yeah. It's we, pretty we, soon, we're, isn't it? We're going to start rehearsals um, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I think you've probably been rehearsing already, though, haven't you? Uh, yes. We, we've had uh, two full band rehearsals with so far without ogre i think ogre's there today and we're going to uh have the first uh full band uh thing today but yeah. i will say i don't know about you guys but how do your ears do when you guys get get into tour land do you, do you guys ever get achy ears man yes we get achy ears yeah we get achy ears rehearsing and you know we're trying to keep it under control so you know often there there's 15 hour days of audio just straight audio and you're just completely wiped out afterwards so you know in ears or not in ears uh but just that fatigue it's uh and then like you and when you go home it just doesn't shut down you're just that audio loop is go, still going strong you know the drill <laughs> yeah yeah, so yesterday I, I pounded myself real hard in my left ear somehow. And uh, it's like you go home and it's like someone punched you like right in the head, right? Yeah. You hope the next day that when you wake up, you're, you're, you're going to be able to hear still. Yeah, is that, that's, is that what you're talking? Yeah, and you're doing the... the... Well, I mean, are you using in-ears? Yes, I am. Uh, but so I, I can get too loud on in-ears. Oh, it's that, easy. Yeah, easy. it's really easy. <laughs> yeah. It's easy because, you know, sometimes there will be a variant in between a sound or a song or something That's like that. That's right. That's right. Kick, well, all of a sudden you realize the kick in like a simulate is 5 dB louder than the kick in so-and-so. So it's like, yeah, there's been some adjusting of levels and stuff like that. That's right. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a note that we're experiencing uh, in a song that every time it comes on we both are just like if we have in-ears it's it's uh it's brutal yeah it's, it's, it's overpowering it's awesome but, um is aaron aaron's at your uh full rehearsals yes he is um uh, he's, helping you, he's helping you set levels yes he is um well the thing is is i have my own self-contained system yes. that i control almost well 100 percent of everything i'm completely self-sufficient i don't need monitors I don't need a monitor man. I don't need anything from the external. So that way I know if something's wrong, I can tell, I can go in there and, and figure out like, you know, what exactly is, is the problem quickly. And um, Aaron has been setting up uh, all the front of house stuff, but he set up this very intricate monitor system where anything that's going through, uh, I guess the stage box, you might want to say, is accessible by some fancy dancy program with like a cell, you, you guys, you use your cell phones. I gather you guys will probably be utilizing this system as well. No, we don't have a system that smart. I know, I, I know of those systems. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fantastic. I mean, it's just the two of us on stage. Uh, so we don't need, need it that uh, intricate, but um, I mean, the mixer is right there. So if we need to adjust our mixes, uh, we can just reach over and do it. I think that um, 
you know how it is. The first week of tour, you're trying to dial things in and different rooms sound different. And so you have to be prepared for that sort of thing, you know. And Josh, you're on in-airs too, I, I take it, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. It I takes know. a bit of getting used to. I, I always thought that, you know, okay, this will be the safer, better way, keep the volume down. And it really is good, but man, it, when you get back, when you haven't toured for a while, for years, and then you put the in-airs back in, it's like, oh man, this hurts almost the first few times. Yeah, I'm not used to them. Uh, so I, um, you know, when during rehearsal, Paul's using them all the time, and I'm probably uh, 30% because I want it, it like, yeah, I, yeah, it, they're, I think they're difficult. And mine, I don't have, you know, very high quality ones. So um, basically, it's, I think they're made by Casio or ColecoVision or something. Commodore made them. I don't know. How about you, Paul? You got some good ones. I do. I have these. They're whatever, JH. Oh, JH Audio. That's what I have too. Those are nice. Yeah. yeah I think they they offer the full range of sound. But I believe that Justin also utilizes uh, headphones like you, Josh. So you guys are on the same page there. Nice. But, nice. You know, um, I've seen some pictures of your of your beautiful setup there, Paul. Looking pretty. <laughs> oh yeah i mean not you guys bringing all that gear or just yeah yeah we're bringing all that gear including <laughs> the velvet <laughs> painting <laughs> right. you know it's like that's our stage show right there yeah so we have a person uh walking across the stage holding uh one um and so each pass it'll be a different velvet painting yeah each song has a velvet we hired somebody to paint a velvet painting for each song specifically yes you know so it's it's like you know reading uh like those old flip bibles you know from the middle ages where you know nobody can read so you just look at the you look at the pages and it tells you everything you need to know just like that there's a copy that's awesome are, are you bringing this base Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the Cox base. I'm not bringing that base. Okay. Thank that you. Really comes out Where did you take these fucking pictures up anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So, so check this out, Kevin. Tell, tell, me, tell me if you don't think this is the most brilliant idea ever. <laughs> okay. You're in the hot seat now. All right. Let's see. So for for years, let's I have see. been pitching this to Paul um, because you know. There's just two people on stage uh, and, you know, neither of us are very exciting to look at or uh, hear or anything. So I thought what we need to do is get two of those uh, wacky, wavy, inflatable tube guys and, oh, have sure. them, and have them as backup dancers. And I thought that was the most brilliant idea ever. And I'm shocked Paul shot it down. <laughs> and so I was like, maybe he was just in a bad mood. So for years... <laughs> They've been sick. Maybe he was just in a bad mood. I'll try it again. <laughs> and still, there's no wacky, wavy, inflatable tube guys. But don't you think that those that would be the best backup dancer? If if you had them in, yeah, like on a switch where where they could just pop up at. Yes, right. I think that would be great. Well, then I went on a deep dive, and uh, so you can get ones that say like "We buy gold." Uh, <laughs> there's like, you know. We can merch. I think one of the most radical things I ever saw was when um, uh, Alligator Jesus in Otto von Schirach had an inflatable tongue that was, he had a, uh, uh, I guess, an air, compressed air system back there that if it was connected to this tongue, this tongue would unfold and it would be the size of the club within th three seconds. Like, holy cow that would just it would go right to the back of the hall and i was like oh my god i don't think i've ever seen anything something on fire i think it's raining it's raining yeah. or hailing or something yeah Are you oh, kidding? It's exactly right it's hailing it's hailing. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's hailing it was sunny like uh we paul and i were outside uh, 30 minutes, minutes ago. ago yeah it was like i had to wear sunglasses <laughs> so the first show of the tour coming up san antonio texas does that mean that you guys will be driving straight from portland all the way down there holy fuck yeah we're gonna drive uh, well you mean without sleeping Wait, i thought you were our driver <laughs> we 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 are flying 
But I know that. Oh, yes. yes of oh, course. they're headlining bands. <laughs> They're cheap flights. Well, That's yeah, of course. Great. I mean, you know, it's like uh, so we would have to ship our stuff and everything, and it, yeah, we're actually hitchhiking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see you. Maybe we won't. I mean, it'd be interesting to compare the costs of actually driving down. Well, then you need your vehicle and everything, of course. Right. Yeah, all yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that all adds up. But you know, the good thing is, is that you guys used to live in Texas, so. Is it a bit like going home? Yeah, it's a small state, you know. It's just like, yeah. you know, oh, it's yeah. <laughs> you know. Does it take two days from the moment you cross into Texas to get down there? That's exactly right. Yeah, we're driving. We um, we um, are going to allow ourselves three days to get there. Oh, that's good. So that we will spend. Let's see. Our first show is on the sixth. So we will sleep there on the night of the fifth. We will be in uh, San Antonio. So we're calling those three days of drive uh, the beginning of rehearsal. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> exactly. Will you guys rehearse in the vehicle on the way to sort of? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Of your parts. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And our dance moves. The vehicle is big enough for that. <laughs> yeah, it's a pacer. <laughs> What when you see the schedule here? What 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 cities do you do you, do you guys look forward to? What's what's your what's your what's your lead into gold hotspots? I don't you see know, all the major cities, all the cities that have more than I don't know five million people in them, something yeah. like that. They, that seems to be um, uh, hotspots, if you will, right? But uh, San Antonio, you know, have you been to the Aztec Theater before? No, I've heard it's nice though. It's absolutely beautiful, yeah. And it, it seems like a lot of the venues got obviously changed to what looks to be better venues. And the better venues, I, I haven't, like I have never played the Bayou in Houston. I have no, no clue what that is or some of right. the other venues that have changed and upgraded. Uh, in in uh, Philly, there's the upgrade to the Mets. I mean, that sounds like real official. Mets, yeah, I don't know that place. Uh, I don't think I know that place. All right. Well, anyway, um, but my favorite thing is burger joints. Uh. <laughs> All those fucking, you know, uh, House of Blues. That's what I love. Oh, right. Yeah. You, I mean, you buy the end, you... I along the way. <laughs> no, along I, the I thought so too. What the fuck am I talking to? <laughs> no, no. I mean, you know. It's like dinner and a show, oh, you know. know. Lord burgers. <laughs> I don't know how many Waffle Houses we're going to run into. <laughs> I know. Yes, That's, I know how many. many. <laughs> it's always my dream that that, that 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 we'll at least be able to, and then if that's if that's possible, that we should hit it up. Play a Waffle House. Okay, a good idea. <laughs> I, was thinking, I was thinking more like eat there. Oh, no. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if I've told you, told you this story before, but the first time I, you know, whatever. So I grew up in Seattle, and then I toured in the north, you know, north, the central, and then northeast. So the first time that I saw a Waffle House was when the Cox were driving into Florida, and so, you know, whatever. Or maybe it was Louisiana, whatever. And we came, you know, we were hungry, so we got off the freeway, and there was an awful house. So the W was missing off of the sign. So, like, oh my God, this place looks amazing. That oh, is, wow. The, I, I wonder how long the first, Like I'd never heard of a Waffle House before that. Yeah. Uh, you know, now that you say that, like the chances of that being just quickly possible on any yeah. Waffle House. I've seen a few Waffle Houses. Like, well, I've never now, seen. Now we've, we, we've put the brains in motion out there. Oh man, I'm going to... Do that before puppy rolls through town. I'm gonna to pull yeah, the W wow. down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> Pretty classic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it'd be a great marketing idea, actually, to shoot out the W's on it. Or he could just start a franchise of the <laughs> yeah. same Waffle House logo, but just missing <laughs> that square. You guys have uh, toured. Um, earlier with Ogre and uh, did quite an extensive tour of America, also with uh, 
with Aaron, the, the front house guy that's mixing this this time. So you you guys have uh, a familiar a bunch of familiar faces to see again. Yes, of course. Uh, um, Josh didn't come out on that. Yeah, on that run. Oh, yeah, and I got off. okay, it was just it was just Paul. Okay, um, so so Josh, this should be good considering that we've also um, become friends over the last several years. And so I think this is gonna be great. Like uh, I know that Paul, bring, you, Paul, you just bring out this classy sort of peaceful energy, but still <laughs> get ass, you know, with some balls on the road. And then to have Josh there as your side man, what a, just a great energy. I'm just so looking forward to the fact that I love, I love the energy of, of, of sharing that that thing with somebody that's a you know, good buddy of yours it's, it's going to be a great time well i mean of course we're really thrilled that um you guys invited us out there and we you know are we look forward to seeing all 25 of your shows so we can critique them at the end of the tour oh, yeah yeah i mean i guess you're not on why don't why don't they throw you into on the vegas thing there's like 600 other bands there my God, that Vegas show is just like a who's who. It's like the industrial wasteland. Like, all right, let's take the lid off the garbage can and see what's yeah. in there. It's like literally everybody is there. It's hilarious. And Justin has to do two sets that day. I, I saw that, yeah. No. It was really funny because, you know, Justin was thinking ahead about how many bands there are, and, and he was thinking about how many stages there are, and he started thinking, wait, there can't be more than 20 or 25 minutes allotted to each band under that under yeah. that scenario so we were thinking that that it could potentially be you know we hope it's longer and i'm pretty sure it will be but Wait, you don't know how long you're supposed to play for at that show Not yet. we've been Nobody's asking. advanced that show we know they are but we have been asking every week and it's almost getting starting to get scary because no one's giving us any solid answer on it so or do you have... think you're going to get paid even <laughs> <laughs> I think we, I mean, I'm sure Steve got, got that together, but, okay, yeah. Yeah. but um, I don't know. It's, you know, the official last show is at the Paramount on this tour and being from Seattle, does that, does that have any place in your, in your historical? Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, I love that venue as a kid. I saw many shows there. Um, like what's the best one you think you've ever seen there? The best show I've ever seen there, um, two of them. One was in uh, 73 or maybe 74, there was um, Brian Ferry. He released that uh, Let's Stick Together. It's like a solo record of covers. And uh, so we toured the States and he played there and I saw that show and it was fantastic. Um, and then uh, Robin Trower, Bridge of Size, if you remember that record. Um, like, you know, super cool, hard rock and record. That show was fantastic. Uh, I also saw Kiss three times at that venue over the course of one year. Those guys were tour dogs. Um, was that back in the classic time? About the old yeah, that was like their first record, second record, first, second record. Exactly. Yeah. See, knowing you, I'm surprised yeah. at that. I would have thought you would have said Steve Winwood. I never saw Steve Winwood. Yeah, it's always interesting to hear what someone says it made an impact on them. You uh, know, in town. I, I love well, it. I, I mean, uh, the Paramount it used to be called the Paramount Northwest. So I I don't know if they still call it that, but I still call it that. Um, I was so happy, you know, to play there. Ministry played there years ago. It was super fun. Um, so yeah, I got to play uh, the, uh, as an adult, I got to play the venues that I had seen bands in. Uh, I went to see Led Zeppelin at the arena in Seattle. I don't know when that was, 73, something like that, 72. A classic time. Um, but I've never played the arena. I, I say the arena, uh, it's not called, it's called like the key, wherever the basketball team plays with the key, it's right at the Seattle center. So there's a big venue. It's like a yeah. 20,000 or 15,000 or something like this. And then next to it is a 5,000 capacity venue, which I think now they call that the arena. But I saw 
Devo in like 80, 81. I saw them there twice. Uh, ministry played at that 5,000 seater, 5,000 capacity venue in Seattle. So that was fun. I've never played them. The Neptune, I always wanted to play the Neptune, which is where this tour was scheduled to play. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know it either. What I mean, we've it's always- one of those super cool venues that is, you, you know, it's a theme venue. So this is like a nautical themed theater, you know, from whatever the 30s, 40s, super cool. That'll be great. And to end off, always end off in hometowns and stuff like that. Everyone can come out and party. It's not like you got to worry at that point too much about COVID because we're all going home. So right. kind of, kind of good. But. Well, I mean, it's funny you mentioned that because I mean, honestly, I'm not thinking about it. I mean, I've, you know, whatever I've had the latest booster or whatever, but fear of COVID is not something that's on my mind. I don't know. Is it on yours? Well, no, because I had it recently. So I think you've got some sort of natural immunity for what Uh I had it like at Christmas, at the uh, Christmas, New Year's. Oh, you did. Okay. And so I was like, okay, it actually made me feel okay. So that's better than a booster probably. Yeah. Right. And so, but you know, I've always said I I kind of want to stay a bit cautious just, just in general, just you're right. I mean, we'll, we'll we'll be cautious. It's true, but it's not, you know, it's not in the front of my mind. Nobody wants to talk to us anyway, so we're not like, we're <laughs> yeah, around exactly. anybody. <laughs> I keep, people keep asking me, are you going to be present at the VIPs to like um, basically throw Wait, things? Wait, Kevin, people are asking you if I'm going to be at the VIPs? No, he's asking if I'm going to be at the VIPs. <laughs> no, <laughs> and Josh. <Duh. laughs> um, of course, we'll all be there, I'm sure, at some place tucked into a corner. And, uh, and and doing stuff. But, you know, Paul, it's important to point out that you've been working on a new album for a while. Um, and I gather that, well, the tour will mostly take place before the, the, the complete release of the album and coming out in, uh, what, April 21st? Yeah, I don't really understand what's going on with that, but that's just how it is. How it um, I believe, yeah, I believe that if you went to Bandcamp, you could stream the whole thing. Um, but yes, and I'm going to have, you know, hard copy from the first show on. Oh, cool. So that so you mean um, on Bandcamp, it will come out and you can go uh, before the physical release then? What I'm saying is right <laughs> now, I believe you could go to Bandcamp and you could listen to the record. Let's see here. I wrong? This is the two songs. Oh, know. I see. And she oh, lost. Yeah, out. those two songs have been released. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So more coming up, I take it. Yeah, more coming up. I think. Um, I you don't know when they're they're going to release another song as a kind of pre-release. Uh, the sea, the sun, that song. Um, Look at that shirt's nice. I know, sweet, right? Yeah, yeah, and it's got a shirt, and or you can get yeah. vinyl. That's awesome. All right, already. Jesus Christ. You don't like it? No, I think it looks fantastic. I love it. Look at the test. Hey, is, is, that, is that a zip-up hoodie? Is that I a zip-up hoodie? hoodie? I don't know if that one's a zip-up hoodie. That one's a hoodie. Rude. Look like it. Rude. Josh, you are the king of hoodies. Yeah, but they have to have zippers. Yeah, I agree, Josh. I, I think the best hoodie in in the world is one with a zip down. That way you can be real sexy and drop your clothes in hallways. Uh. And still have your hoodie on? <laughs> no, I, I give all my hoodies to Josh. Yeah. Oh, I see. Actually, I'm wearing your old hoodie today. And I'm it's, proud. It's worn, the elbow's worn out now. <laughs> I mean, I always tell, tell people that, um, you know, my man, Josh Hawley, is wearing the goods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, repping. <laughs> so, give us some detail on the eternal present. Um, how long were you working on it? And, and, and what, what did it take? to pull it together and now, how do you feel about playing it live? Well, okay, first of all, um, I guess I really started focusing on writing some new material directly after the Sun Behind the Sun. That was the last record that I released, which was the record that I toured on when I went out with Ogre in uh, 18. Um, And then 
you know, in 19 started trying to drum up some new material and then, you know, COVID happened and everybody got depressed and, you know, it was difficult to, to do anything. And, uh, you know, over the course of those years, I was working on the material that became the eternal present, the record, um, you know, and then there's some outtakes, um, but I'm super happy with it. I think it sounds great. I think there's some cool sounds, cool songs. Uh, Josh and I will be playing, over half the set is gonna be this new material. Right. Um, and I, I think it sounds super cool and yeah, I'm excited to do it, yeah. Josh was raving to me about it the first time he heard it and I know he has good taste, so. That's right, I do remember saying that to you. And, and I admit, I told Paul this yeah. too, it's like. You said, Paul, it's the best, best thing he feels that you've done. Yes, ever. Paul's not, Paul's not smiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm happy to hear that. And, um, you know, whatever, you, like just, Paul, you just want to keep going. Paul knows that, like I say, you know, I don't give, big compliments uh no, that's what i mean if you if you hear that from i think it's a great record i think it's really interesting it's it's like it's i think it's a really great combination of like classic and evolution i think that that's kind of how i would describe the feel of the record it's um i think it's i think it's awesome it's my favorite lead in the gold record put it that way you know there's nothing wrong with hearing that. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, seeing it live too is 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 going to be. I think it was always the case that a lot of bands tour and play new songs before you've heard it on the album, and you'll and, and you'll be like, "Wow, what the hell was that?" And be like, "Oh, that's the new stuff." That's a great thing. Yeah, I think yeah, it's. I, 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 I mean, it's one of those things. I I don't. I, um, I don't, you know, whatever. People are going to see you. They're going to the show to see Skinny Puppy. So I'm just. No, they're not. They're coming to see you too. You've got a, <laughs> Paul, you're, you've got a, 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 such a history that, you know, obviously people know that when, when, when you're yeah. along with us, that, you know, you're like, well, how do we say it? Industrial royalty? <laughs> okay, sure. I mean, if you, if you look at your, if you yeah. look at, if you look at your discography, yes, Jesus, God, look at all these names on there, people. Yeah, about every record that you you and your mom and your dad listen to. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Look at that. There's some cool records on there. There's some damn cool records on here, Paul. You should be damn proud of them all too. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> it's just like that's amazing. And look at all these projects. I mean, you're active in a lot of things, and led into gold, of course, is like your, 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 your my your, current focus for sure. Yeah, your focus, and it's great that we get to witness 25 shows of that. Oh man, I know. Yeah. Isn't that funny? I'm so thrilled to, you know, it goes both ways. This uh, is going to be a gasp. But well, you know, you know the um, the artist Edward Gorey. You know Edward Gorey. Who? Edward Gorey. He did like the, um, uh, uh, oh God, um, no, the, these, the, he did like illustrated quote unquote children's books, like, uh, um, oh, I'm totally drawing I'm not, a blank. I'm not, I probably am familiar with the, you know, what you're talking about, but not the name. Yes. Well, this guy was, he's an illustrator. He's, from New England and um, he lived in New York for many years and he was such an eccentric that he and he loved the ballet so for like 10 years he went to every ballet at the Met like he went to every performance that he could go to so he would see you know like you know 50 performances of of you know whatever whatever the ballet was doing you know whatever that show was and so when you get to see 25 shows of, a, you know, somebody else performing, it's really amazing. Yeah, by the end. All we'll the have... subtleties, you get to see 
you know, you, you learn all the cues, all the tricks, you know, all the all the moves, and then you get to see the other subtleties. So it's really a lot of fun. How many shows do you guys think that you've done together? See, I'm asking the questions now. Who? You two. How many shows have we done together? Yeah, I'm like, like, uh, I mean, not like. All have we ever played a show? We have not played together. No, not, no. To, never. Not to, like not in the same. This will, band. Be, uh, this will be the first uh, time we'll be able to share the same stage. I didn't know that. Yeah, I'm not sure. No, we had this. Yeah, it is true. I would know because I would hug Paul after his set, and then he'd be sweaty, <laughs> and I would be like, "Well, yeah, get that sweat off me." <laughs> no, actually, it would be the other way around. <laughs> oh, yeah. I well, got we. We're going to have fun. Yeah, it's going to be super fun. I would like to ask Josh, because you are Mr. Synthesizer, about, well, can, do you want to give up any secrets or are you, are you bringing some goodies that you want to talk about? Or how did you approach coming up with the stuff for what, what you want to play with Paul for the tour? So, you know, so this isn't my project. And uh, so I, um, early on, just, you know, whatever I said, I'm, I'm, playing or doing whatever, you know, Paul wants or, or whatever. And so we have to, we have to look at, at, we have to make the smallest footprint uh, um, because, you know, whatever, it's two people. Um, and, you know, we're opening for a band that has uh, every piece of gear known to man um, on stage. So we know our footprint's small. So we, both said you know or thought like as we're kind of filling up and testing gear if this works or not um like what's the most bang for the buck uh and we have it narrowed down to a rack and uh, uh npcx a pro 2 and uh my keytar the az1 nice and I know that means something to some people and to other people. That's like, what did he just say? <laughs> that's your AZ1. It's opalescent white. You know, screams classy. For me, it was like we, we've talked about this tour happening for years. Yes. And we had to keep it secret for years, too. And so that's been kind of challenging. But that's given you time to think about, well, maybe I might want to change this or change that and change this. Paul, what's the most important thing that you you were able to change in the three years <laughs> well okay so i'm the kind of person that doesn't get anything done unless there's a deadline so <laughs> having <laughs> having this tour as a deadline you know forced me to finish this record i oh, knew nice. that as, as soon as this you know talk of this tour you know came about it's like okay my god i need to capitalize on this i need to have a new record you know so so every year that it got postponed or delayed or, 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 you know, I was like, okay, thank God, I can spend some more time on this new record. But that, that's, that's the main thing, you know, to um, the uh, postponements allowed me to finish this record, you know, to spend more time on the record. Um, so literally, I can, I can honestly say, if, had we toured last year or even two years ago, I don't know if I would have finished the record. I imagine I would have finished a record, but it would have been a different record for sure. Yeah, that's a you know that's a good uh, a good incentive to know. And then, so when we kept on postponing, you were probably like, "Oh, good, I get to work." That's right. With that's exactly right. <laughs> I mean, a couple of things like that happened for me as well, where where it was like, "Oh, actually, this I think this has worked out to the best." Because I don't know about you guys, but the day we loaded in and for the rehearsal, it's the first day of spring. And it's like this torrential rain that's been happening down here. Stop. Probably Southern California. Yeah. 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 And it was like, you know, it's just the most uncanny weird weather we've been having. And so now it's just, just opened up and it's not too hot. It's still cool and everything like that. But thank God, it, it just seems like it's going to be, you know, the perfect season, the perfect time of, uh, of year to head out. So your drive down south shouldn't be... Uh, Shouldn't be too too bad. But well, let's see. We got we got to go through the Rockies, and you know, you never know. It's still it's the, you know, right? You do? There might be a storm that comes through yeah. next weekend, and you know, 
Where do you guys hit the Rockies on the way down? Oh, well, we're going to go through oh, them from Utah, from Salt Lake City to Albuquerque. Okay, that makes perfect sense. So you're kind of going diagonally down. Yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah. So we need to go through the Cascades and then Eastern Oregon to get to Salt Lake City. So, you know, there might be something there that that pass, the 84 pass gets closed all the time. Have you, uh, you guys got lots of yummy merch for all the people uh, loving to get some lead into gold stuff? Yes, we have merch. Excellent. Uh, we have some a, oddball items too. Oh, nice. Any like, oh, so people should run to the merch booth. <laughs> well, and go check it out. Look for the wacky, wavy, inflatable tube guys. Yeah. And you they're VIPers, they're merch sales. don't forget, you guys get first access and dibs at, at the merch table. So lucky you guys. And, uh, and, and, and as I said, those guys might be around. And that's uh, going to afford us gas to the next show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, then I think, I think you know, we need to have people help encourage you to get, you know, safely there on the drive. So um, we, we need to find ways to give you guys gifts along the way. If anybody uh, is at a Waffle House, <laughs> and you mean like a gift card? <laughs> yeah, we'll take some gift cards, Waffle House gift cards. And just throw a sheet. Yeah, here's, of what's even what's even better is just bring us, you know, yeah, plate. A, a plate of food, and hopefully it's a day or two old, and it'll be it'll be awesome. Oh yeah, I won't let you guys suffer. I'll make sure you got something. We got some questions here. Oh yay! Uh, let's see here. Uh, start start at the top. Uh, yeah. Let's see, uh, let's see you. Joey, Josh. Charlie Lee Bailey, I'll see you in Minneapolis. I hope your rehearsals are going well. We gold have CDs at the merch table. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, a ticket to Atlanta. Yeah, I want a million. <laughs> Is there any oh, letter to gold CDs? Okay, yeah. Hey, Paul, I had the pleasure of meeting you at the Revco show in Dallas back in October. I wanted to say thank you for signing my stuff and chatting. Can't wait. Lead and, lead and puppy in Houston. Oh, okay. Yeah. Lead and puppy. It's cool to see that. Growing up as a fan, Josh gets to open for SP in their final tour and alongside Paul Barker. Josh, is that, hey, hey. Is that something to say about that? I, you know, so, you know, Kevin, you and I have talked about this for, like you said, the past couple of years. And so anybody that knows me, Skinny Puppy has been, you know, I mean, I, they, uh, <laughs> I say this, you know, fairly often, like, I wouldn't be sitting here had I not listened to Skinny Puppy because they really, you guys shaped my life and made me obsessed about sound and effects and synthesizers, which ultimately led, uh, you know, me to be here with uh, Paul. And, you know, I'm, I like, honestly, you, you were, uh, you said I almost jumped in and said, like, so it hasn't really even hit me yet. And because we're just so in the trenches and like, like, you know, stress and, and uh, just like rehearse, 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 work, rehearse, work. And I don't really think it's gonna hit me until we're in the car, but like <laughs> the thought of touring with you guys and being, you know, with Paul, with Paul it, it's like, I can't even put into words. Like I'll just start bawling any second. Can we all pinch him at once. Everyone, reach over and pinch him. Give us a, <laughs> a pinch for us, Paul. I I just can't believe it. I'm <laughs> assuming I'm dead. <laughs> and like right. <laughs> yeah. I I think it's a it's it's something that you know you've always been so complimentary, Josh. Um, thank you very much for that. It's important to point out you guys also work together. Uh, Maleko Heavy Industry great modules, great company. If you've ever owned uh, a, a modular synthesizer, you've probably seen or played with one of the products, the Manther, such great, great stuff. Um, of course, you guys have have Brap in the factory right there right now. And who, there can, couldn't be finer hands in the world that I that I would entrust with that. So um, I know that we're, uh, we're, we're anxiously awaiting that when that happens. Hey, did you ever, not to switch gears too much, but did you ever uh, uh, publicly show those uh, faceplate pictures? Yes, I did. I, I shared them with the Patreoners. 
they came out so nice. Uh, and fantastic. I should, they should be here. Uh, and then uh, there's a local um, UV printing uh, fellow. So I can't wait to show those. Yeah. So we should say to everybody, if you're watching, that Josh is doing his best to get it to you when it will happen the best way possible. And though it's not... It's, it's, it's not a surprise that, you, you know, you run into time shortages when you're dealing with acquiring all sorts of parts from all over the world. Uh, it is happening, and uh, I hope it will happen um, within a timely manner that doesn't stress Josh out. It's one of those, you know, it's it's tough to be in manufacturing. And yeah. it's such a dance. And what used to take, you know, such a small amount of time and be super efficient is not. Yeah, no, and, uh, no, so no. you, you, you know, you, you do the best that you can and, uh, and all the pieces eventually come in, uh, together. Um, but I think it's funny. I'm more excited about it now. I don't know. It's just something about seeing those, that aluminum, which yeah. is a pain in the ass. Like I, aluminum vendors, uh, they, you know, companies, small companies are just dying in having a good, you know, metal fab place. Uh, oh, when you and I talked uh, on the show about um, uh, Brett, like that was something that was really stressing me out, uh, finding vendors that you can rely on that do a good job. Yeah, and I know you, that was imp imperative for you to find that. It, it has to be perfect. Yeah, has to and, be perfect. You know, you have to also kind of, um, especially dealing with somebody you haven't dealt with before, you have to really scrutinize them and because they're going to tell you so many things and maybe even show you examples and that maybe they didn't do. And um, I have to make sure that all the pieces uh, that are in play, which is so many variables are, you know, perfect. And that's awesome. I'm pretty, pretty happy. Are you going to bring any Manthers or modules on the road for the merch booth? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> in our in our spacious spacer or pacer <laughs> spacious pacer yeah that counts fast no now are you guys prepared just in case we grab you to play a song uh, josh, we josh, are i saw a picture of a guitar <laughs> josh was that real you know kevin um you i was whenever we were talking uh we usually talk I don't know, at least once a week. And we have it for a while. We should, we should have a, we should have a chat. But yeah, they're bringing okay. the key. Okay, if I drag you I'm on. Just, I'm just saying. You better have a key tar. Yeah. Do you have a key tar, Paul? No. Yes. <laughs> he, he has one. Oh, well, I do. We're not bringing it yet. I mean, uh, you have to always be prepared. That's the one thing. That, <laughs> You when we're on tour i'm just gonna wander on stage and uh i think i think that's the best thing to do the security will take you out but it'll be okay <laughs> hey it's also important to point out that you guys are, are are not only uh playing our tour but you guys are playing cold waves uh, again this fall um it, i guess like the return to chicago in that sense is always a grand one for you guys it always is. It's always really wonderful. Yeah, you're you're like um, you could be like the king of cold waves representing <laughs> because you can appear in so many different, so many different projects. That oh, there's there's Paul. There's Paul. But I'm really I'm, is... I'm I'm really thrilled to be involved with cold waves. I think it's you know it's a fantastic fundraiser and um you know it's always super nice to be uh, in that environment and. Everybody's really gracious and, um, you know, it gets me, you know, it, it makes me work on music, whatever it is, it makes me work on music and then, you know, get on stage. So I, I'm appreciative of that as well. What's your favorite DAW, Paul? I'm, I've been using Logic. Yeah. Like, I've been using, so I, I used to be a Pro Tools person and, uh, you know, i I decided I was going to try something different. So I went to Logic. Although all my Logic, <clears throat> hardcore Logic users are now using Ableton. Do you know that? Oh, 
no, they're reverting. I've heard they're they're all walking like walking back. Are you serious? They're reverting back yeah. to logic. They'll, you'll go to Ableton for a while, and then the, it's like more like the finishing of the song as much as you can do in Logic becomes like the thing. It's like, oh, well, is that right? Couldn't do that or couldn't do this. Sure, you can bounce all your stems out real quick, but other than that. Oh, boy. Well, the Eternal Present, this record was uh, done in Logic. Logic. Let's see a couple more questions here. Yeah, before. let's see what we got. Are you guys going to rehearse today, by the way? We already have. Oh, you already have bright and early. Yeah, I've been getting in. I got in at four thirty this morning. You, you're an early riser. <laughs> well, that's right. Yes. Be a fly on the wall for even a fraction of, of Paul's adventures. Thrilled he's touring partner for this final tour, of Skinny Puppy. Paul, thanks so much for all the music and inspiration. Question, comment for the um, Laura album. Land of Raven, honey. Yeah. Oh, okay. Was there any major, uh, major changes in the way you work compared to early material? That was the early material. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. I guess they're talking about that. Do so, you, uh, you have, you work, uh, he's referencing that as your earlier. Like, no, it says for the Land of Raven Honey album, were there any major changes in the way you worked compared to the earlier material? So material that was earlier than Land of Raven I mean, uh, that's how I'm reading it. How are you reading it? I can't see that part. Okay. So. <laughs> I forgot you can't read. Okay. I, I, so. I'm learning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, I mean, okay. So, Land of Rape and Honey, it was a big change for me because all of a sudden it was, you know, working with Al, I was in the hot seat because it's self produced. So, when it's self produced, you're doing everything, you know, so you're mixing, you're recording, you're mixing, you're, you know, doing, arranging all that shit. So prior to that, my studio uh, experience had been as a player, you know, so you go in and you lay down your parts and, you know, you try and do it as competently as possible. And, you, you know, that that's really, that's the extent of that role, um, you know, because there, there would be an engineer and, you know, possibly a producer, but, you know, you're not involved in 100% of the project. So, Land of Rape and Honey, Al and I were involved in 100% of that project. I mean, I suppose we didn't do the mastering, but everything up to mastering we did. Um, and that was, you know, there was a huge learning curve there. Uh, yeah. So Very, there, I don't know. I suppose that answers that question, but it's a fucking historical footnote. Who cares? And, you know, you and you and Al and Rieflin you know, basically are like an institution uh, when it comes to like your sound, like Skinny Puppy may get noted for who we are, but you guys got to be noted for what you did. I think at the same time, we were coming out and shaking one side of the country and the other side of the country. And because right away, I remember first time I ever heard you guys, we were in some hotel room somewhere and I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and it was like really nice to uh, have this energy like like always long oh of course that's paul and al again or you know paul, whatever so um how are you guys today do you still speak speak with al i do yeah yeah um, yeah it's it's he, a, uh he's yeah. going to be doing this this tour i guess it's i don't know what, what Gary all... Newman and frontline assembly that should be interesting okay yes there's that that's right and then and then there's another tour in the summer after that. I don't know if it's been announced. Has it been announced? Anyway. Yeah, it's a giant, um, like, Rob Zombie rock tour type thing. Yeah, with Alice Cooper. With Alice Cooper, yeah. So I don't know if that's stadiums, but, yeah, it's going to be big. Yeah. Um, but, no, I'm not involved with that whatsoever. But, uh, yeah, I talked to Al. I have, haven't seen him too much, but we'll be seeing him in Vegas. And if I see him, um, I'll... Uh, I'll give him a hug from all of us. Hey, yeah, sure. One sec. Um, there was one last uh, footnote on that question there. The film hardware used stigmata along with public image. Uh -huh. How did that come to be? I honestly don't remember that. Did the record or did the director Richard Stanley contact you directly for that or to go through your label? Right. I I don't know. I, Sometimes um, we don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I Never think heard I, those going, Brian Conley. I, you know what I remember is that scene in AI 
<laughs> yeah. We, we, uh, when ministry was in uh, AI. Yeah, right. So, uh, what was that like? Well, it was fantastic. It was a really uh, wonderful experience. You know, it's like Steven Spielberg was the director. So it was, yeah, I mean, you know, it was like you, you can't get any, like the budget can't get any bigger, you, you know. Yeah. Or if it if it is, then where's it going? Who cares, you know? But um, we did that scene, the so-called flesh fair scene, as it was called, um, at the um, Long Beach Pier. I can't remember what they call it. It's the dome in Long Beach where the Queen Mary is. Oh yeah. And the uh, Spruce Goose used to be in that hangar, so it's a big dome. So they at some point Bruce Goose went away and then they all of a sudden there was this giant space there and that's where that filming took place you, you know that movie is one of the few movies that made me cry <laughs> <laughs> I, thought that, I thought that was oh what's that film Sleeping in Seattle? I don't know. He just, <laughs> he just does it to me every time. Beaches. Josh, Josh you ever cry in a movie? Yeah, beaches. <laughs> it wasn't Goonies. <laughs> Goonies. <laughs> Goonies. Uh, also, um, uh, Weekend at Bernie's. Oh yeah, it's a tear jerker. It's a tear jerker. And the fact that they made a Weekend at Bernie's too. <laughs> that, that's right. <laughs> I think uh, you guys answered Brian's question about are you going to be rehearsing today. I am on my way to rehearsal right after this chat. All right. And Awesome. I'm going to be go meeting up with these guys. Yeah, no, those those like Dustin. Yeah, that's right. Dustin, Dustin. Wait, yeah. but Dustin, is Dustin going to be on stage with you guys? Uh, I believe so. Fantastic. He's got a rig that's uh, looking pretty fancy schmancy. Does he? Does he? So, uh, I, I don't know. I'd just like to thank you guys for dropping in here for a quick hour on this Sunday. And I'm so looking forward to seeing you in the flesh. Oh, fuck yeah. So hang on a second, uh, Kevin. Yeah, say hi to Matthew and Dustin and Justin. Okay. And Ray and uh, Aaron. Uh, I don't know who else is. Just tell everybody I say hi. Ogre, if you see Ogre, kick him in the nuts for us. I think uh, actually Dre is here on the side and he's saying hello back. As are so many other people uh thanks guys for all of your comments here uh I, we haven't had a time to go through these ones but thank you for joining in the chat today all of you uh supporters patreon people paul are you on patreon no i'm not yeah. Yeah. you should be uh the people of patreon are so supportive i gotta say that i have undying respect for the way the community runs and the way and the way that the artists get supported. So big oh, up that's wonderful. for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Josh, I'll be talking to you. Let's let's talk in a couple more days. Yeah. Uh, until then, great luck with rehearsals, guys. Don't blow out your ears. And <laughs> drive safely, okay? Yeah, thank you. you. Same for you.